welcome to Where Are They Now? Quarantine Edition from Wild Horse Productions. And I'm Carol Scott, Executive Director of Wild Horse Productions. And with me today, we have Melody Ricketts. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so nice to see your face and not just see you and talk to you. So it first of really all, amazing. are you quarantining somewhere different from where you live? Tell us where you usually are and where you are today. Well, I live in Los Angeles. I've been there for um, going on six years, but I could not be in a more opposite environment right now. Where are you? <laughs> I am in a town that most people think I'm making up called Angels Camp with my mom. Oh, and what state is that? It's up north in California near okay. Stockton. Okay. And it's beautiful. There's, there's like no one here it's green and there's forestry and there's it's wine country there's deer everywhere like it's the perfect place to that's, just kind of that's isolate. great that's great well yeah. um did you like leave la just because of the quarantine did you yeah totally because um especially i knew that once things had gotten more intense that i didn't want to be in a busy place like la yeah, so I, I, my mom and I are best friends anyway. So I was like, I'm just gonna come stay with you until my jobs exist again. <laughs> I love your mom and say hi to her for me. I will, I will. Love the whole Ricketts family. Yes. I think I have your sister um, uh, video with your sister tomorrow. So oh, good, good. Get to see everybody. Yes. So we're talking about Wild Horse and uh, we want our young actors to be able to see some of our alumni and where they've gone and what they've done. So can you like um, tell us what your first show was with Wild Horse and your maybe your last show and things yeah. like that? Um, my first show was, I believe your first show, Charlotte's Web, right? Oh, was yes. Was the first? And I played Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> I loved every second of it, except for the last performance when my fake nose fell off during my monologue. Do you remember that? <laughs> That was so awful, I was so upset. Um, and then my last show, this is so depressing because this was a really long time ago, but I think it was Aladdin Jr. Okay. Is that and, right? And you were always one of our stars. I mean, in Aladdin, <laughs> oh, you were, oh, the puppet. Iago, so. Iago. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was what such a blast. job. You were Belle <laughs> in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you had a lot of big roles with us, and I totally remember Charlotte's Web and you as the pig. <laughs> yeah. And my sister as Charlotte, which was so cute. Mm -hmm. I have a, a cover, a magazine cover. I want to see if I can find that. With yes, that. we have one of those here. We found it. That's great. Maybe you can take a screenshot of it for me. Yes, sure. What age did you start at Wild Horse? Uh, let's see. I must have been... 11? I think I was 11. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Pretty young. And yeah, I'm 24 LA. now. Whoa. You've been in LA for how many years? Almost six, and I'll be uh, 25 next month. Oh, that's so hard to believe that you've been in LA for six years because I remember. Tell me about it. I know. Okay. So, can you tell us? Um, uh, how you decided to go to LA and what, what your career path took. And I know you've done a lot of different things in LA and you're still in the entertainment business. Some of our alumni have taken other career paths and tell us why you went to LA and, and what happened when you got there. Sure, so uh, my sister had been already living in LA um, with a friend of ours, Kenny Kinsey, who is the genie with uh, Wild Horse. Um, they were living together in LA and my sister was working as a Disney princess for um, events and children's birthday parties. And uh, she was loving it. And her boss called me one day when I was in Nevada, um, you know, six years ago now, and said that the business, the princess business was expanding. And if I wanted to work for her as a princess in Los Angeles, and I'd always wanted to live in Los Angeles, because I love film and um, photography and theater and just all of it, you know. Um, so I took the job, and in like a month, I I just made the move and went there and took that princess job, and I'm still doing that job. <laughs> That's great, and that must be really fun too. Oh, it's it is so rewarding. Like 
the amount of opportunities I've had, not only just because I love kids and Disney and makeup and the whole thing, but I, I've been given some really awesome opportunities like Allure magazine, the like beauty magazine interviewed me, picked me out of like, I didn't even audition and I was able to go on their YouTube channel. The video has like 5 million views, like for just this, just, you know, just this, um, beautiful and crazy job. <laughs> favorite princess? Yeah, Belle. Belle's my oh, favorite. That's, so that was, that's like the most emotional that I, you know, played it with your um, production company and oh, which was such a good production. I'll never get over how good it was for children. It favorite. was. It was great and a stellar cast. Stellar yes. cast. And I just, speaking of Heather, who you just interviewed, I just remember us like crying over how much we loved each other. <laughs> like I'd go see her play Belle and she'd go see me play Belle and we'd both just be crying like, you were so good. <laughs> just well, that's, that's the theater thing that, that happens. And we talked yeah. about that. I think I talked about that with Peyton that you become a family and people are at what shows end you're crying because you've like been with these people through rehearsals and through all the shows. Yeah. And you really build that bond, which is amazing. Totally. It's so powerful. So I know you've been doing a million other things. So tell us some and of your other uh, careers you had in LA. Well, um, ironically, my, my um, I don't like to say biggest because all, all the things matter. But um, my favorite success so far was I got cast as Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors. Um, but that was in Michigan. I did a video submission in LA and I filmed it in my car <laughs> because my downstairs neighbor is cranky to put it lightly. Um, and I didn't expect to even get any, any email being like, thanks for applying. And then somehow, some way I booked the part. So, um, I got to have my first professional production playing a dream role. So that was huge. Playing that's that part. wonderful. That's what, so that's good for people to know that there yeah. are other options for people uh, to do out there besides writing your community. Yeah, that's something I really love about um, <laughs> not this exact day and age, <laughs> as we all know, but you know, aside from the chaos right now, uh, it doesn't really matter as much as it used to um, where you live, you know. You, there's opportunities really cropping up everywhere. That's, um, that's not just in big cities, you know. Um, you can always find ways to chase dreams and opportunities. You don't have to be in LA. You don't have to be in New York, you know. And you were also doing so, a singing group for a while? Are you still Oh, doing yeah, that? I was in a... <laughs> LA is a very, like, gig-based place, I will say. Like, you, you just throw yourself at all these different kinds of gigs, and it's so cool because you can create all these circles of um, people and develop all these skills you didn't think you could do. Like, yeah, I was in a 1940s, like, swing, super difficult harmony tr troupe for a while. And then work got in the way, um, the princess job. So I couldn't do that anymore, but it was amazing while I had it. Um, and then I'm making my own music production wise. Um, I have like a home studio. I make like indie oh, synth pop. That's great. Do you have a link you can tell us so people can? Yeah, um, a lot of the stuff I have, I'm like a perfectionist. So I'm sitting on a lot of it and I'm not putting it out yet, but I do have a SoundCloud um, which is just Melody Dash Ricketts, and I have a couple songs on there. Great, that's, a, that's amazing. We love seeing all your original things, and you do photography also. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, right before um, this isolation happened, uh, my photography business um, for headshots was booming, and I, I love that I, I got back into it, because I did them back in Nevada when I was really young. Right. Um, and I just didn't do it. And then I have this gorgeous camera that I've had and I just decided to pick it back up and I adore it. Like, I just want to make it my full-time job, honestly. Like, I just love, love taking headshots. That's great. Um, That's great. That's a real art in itself too. Yeah. So can you tell us about a crazy or funny story that might've happened besides your nose falling off as well? Oh, yeah. I do remember that. And 
it's seared in my memory, but you went on. Uh, anything else you that you that was crazy or funny? Oh man! On stage or on stage? Oh, I know there. Was, I know there had to be. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. There was Susical. Oh, I loved doing Susical. <laughs> um, there was. Oh, well, <laughs> you guys, I have to bring this up. I remember one time during Aladdin rehearsals, I don't even remember who was, I, I do not even remember who the other cast of Aladdin was at the time, but I was um, dating or dating CJ and you made us go on stage and do an example of what cuddling should look like when you were blocking in the magic carpet scene. To be fair, I don't remember a lot, and <laughs> a lot of our cast members are telling me things that I'm thinking, oh, I should have probably known that, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I say things like that, too. I don't know you want to keep that in here, but I just thought that was amazing. I love um, that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> there were so many, you know, we all, we all had such big special personalities backstage. I think that was something I really loved. I loved making, um, remember those crazy videos I used to make? Yes, yes. Yes, I loved like getting people together to make up dances and like reenact scenes and film it and like edit it together. Um, yeah, that was, that was one of my favorite things about it for sure. Everyone was always down for that. That's your creativity in the arts, I mean. <laughs> You have spanned the arts here, Melody, for sure. Oh. Do you have a dream role that you would love to play one day? Yes, my dream role is Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd. Oh, what a wonderful show that is. It's like my favorite show. Um, but obviously I'm way too young for it now. Um, I wouldn't, there's actually a few roles that I'm like, cool, I can, you know, wait a little bit and work on my craft before I'm the appropriate age. So that's kind of nice. You know, they have a Sweeney Todd high school edition. <laughs> <laughs> I've been putting people on the spot to see if they would like to share a song with us or a verse from a song. And I wanted to know if you would like to sing for us because all of us would, of course, love to hear that. Uh, okay. Um, well, I, I guess I will do a little of Somewhere That's Green from Little Shop of Horrors, because that's just one of my favorites. So I'll just do like like a little, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let me think for a second. Where do I want to start? Okay, here we go. Between our frozen dinner and our bedtime, 9.15, we snuggle watching Lucy on our big, enormous, 12-inch screen, I'm his December bride. He's father, he knows best. Our kids watch howdy duty as the sun sets in the west. A picture out of better homes and gardens magazine. Far from Skid Row, I dream we'll go somewhere that's green. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing that with me because I get to see you sing again. Oh, yeah. You're, you're amazing in that role. It's uh, one of my favorite shows and one of my favorite roles, too. And I can't yeah, that who is more deserving or talented for that role. Uh, well, it's, I had a full on, like, um, you know, Ellen Green, the original, right? Yes. Um, so I, I was very inspired by her. Just now I was like, should I do it in the voice? And then I was like, no, I'm not going to do it in the voice. Because <laughs> I, I gave her a lisp and, you know, the accent and everything. Right, right. Uh, so any advice you would give our young stars who are in our shows now and maybe thinking about this for a career? I have talked to so many people and everybody has different ways they've gotten places and different career paths. So what advice would you give someone? Oh, that's a, that's a 
you know, there's so many different things that I would like to say and share. Um, looking back on, you know, my time in Nevada growing up uh, and knowing that theater was what I wanted to do pretty much right off the bat at age eight when I did my first show, Annie, at Backstage Kids. Um, I think the most important thing is doing it with with absolutely love, which is pretty obvious, um, and not feeling like you have to dim your love or dim your light to look a certain way to other people, or because you're afraid that you'll come off as too much, because that was always my biggest thing, is that I was like, oh, I, I love this too much, I should like calm down, I should just kind of, you know, and just be more than like be yourself obviously but um feel everything that you feel with your whole heart and do everything that you do with your whole heart you don't have to look cool there's no such thing as looking cool um and nothing is cooler than seeing somebody just shining and doing what they love with all of them um and and there really are no small parts either so don't get too in your head about what part you are because um, the love and the light that comes with the magic of theater is blinding no matter where you are in the cast or where you are on the stage, you know? Um, I don't know if any of that made any sense. That's but <laughs> amazing, amazing advice. And I, I've heard, I mean, I'm, I say that all the time. There are no small parts, only small actors. Yes. Uh, and I've heard it. I'm, I've heard it from our other alumni too, and I'm glad that that's sticking. And you again were one of our stars who who had the talent uh, and the perseverance to have big parts, but also took small parts with generosity and with the passion of a, an actor who just yeah. loves the stage. So mm -hmm. I thank you for that, and I thank you for sharing that with our actors who are watching this today. And we are my watching question. your trajectory to the sky really, uh, from afar, you know, and we will, we will be there, you know, in, in your footlights and watching you. Uh, thank you for sharing everything with us. Thank you for this experience. Thank you for letting me get dressed up. And we were saying, <laughs> we, are, we are dressed up from to, to the waist. <laughs> And then in our PJs and slippers. <laughs> but again, thank you, Mel. And of course, I'll thank you, Carol. And like you always do. We'll see you soon. Well, same to you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Where are you?